We were watching this morning. I was actually on the air as uh, Theresa May made some news, as did Jeremy Corbyn, her adversary, as it were. What comes next? Well, David, it's an extraordinarily uh, complicated day, yet another one, uh, yet another day when people are talking about constitutional crisis, uh, to the extent that now we've just begun an emergency three-hour debate in the House of Commons so that MPs can vent about what they think the Prime Minister is doing or indeed about her language when they told her, when she told them earlier today that they'd all been indulging themselves a bit too much on Europe in the mother of parliaments. So what happens next? She sent off her letter to the European Commission saying, please may I have a delay from the 29th of March deadline for the implementation of Brexit. Uh, the immediate reactions from the Commission informally are uh, you're not going to have the date that you want, which is the 30th of June. If you want a delay, you can have till the 23rd of May, which is the beginning of the European Parliament elections, or you can have a longer one, but you're not going to have that one. So that's immediately a spanner in the works. Mrs May herself says, I don't want a long extension. Uh, that's partly because she's come under a lot of pressure from the hardline Brexiteers who fear that a long extension might mean no Brexit at all. So she has uh, asked for a short one, but the trouble with a short one is that we're not quite sure what she would do with those few weeks. And the Europeans, the other Europeans, are saying in response, we're not even interested in considering any kind of delay unless you tell us what it's for. Have you got a package you've got through Parliament? No. Are you going to call a general election? silence. Are you going to have another referendum? No, thank you. So there's a certain amount of confusion in European minds about why she wants this delay. So the omens for the European Council, that's the meeting of heads of government that starts on Thursday tomorrow, reaching agreement on the British Prime Minister's request are not great. So what we're watching right now, in addition to Sir Peter Westmacott on the right of our screen, on the left of our screen is that emergency debate that he just referred to taking place even as we speak over in Parliament. So she has requested formally by letter this extension. Did she have the authority to do that? Or another way to put it is, suppose Mr. Tusk came back and said, okay, you have your extension. Is that effective? Does Parliament have to ratify that? Well... <laughs> It's a very good question. Twice her deal has gone to Parliament, twice it's been turned down. She wanted to give it another go yesterday, but um, the ruling of the Speaker of the House meant that that was going to be very difficult, and actually the votes weren't there. So uh, she can technically uh, ask for um, an extension to do that. She can technically, if the Speaker allows it, resubmit her motion to Parliament. Uh, and Parliament will have to sign off on an extension if she gets that agreed by the European side. So all that is a lot of work to do in the remaining few days before the official deadline of the 29th of March. And I remind you that if nothing else changes, if there is no new law voted through the British Parliament, the default position is that the United Kingdom leaves the European Union at the end of this month without any sort of deal. Which raises, at least in my mind, Sir Peter, uh, is there a real possibility we could bumble into uh, a Brexit with no agreement at all when actually no one wants that result? Brussels doesn't want it, Sir, uh, Prime Minister May doesn't want it, not even the Labour Party wants it, and yet if we just fumble our way forward over the next few days, we may end up there by default. One of the problems is that there are some people within the ruling Conservative Party who think that's a very good idea. Not a majority, but when you haven't got a majority in the Parliament, and of course Theresa May lost her majority when she called an early general election 18 months ago, then it means that a small number of noisy people can hold you hostage. So that's part of her problem, that without a majority, even a dozen or 20 or 30 or however many it is, it's not more than that, who think that crashing out with no deal, as we call it here, uh, is a good idea. They do have considerable influence in the way in which the Prime Minister moves. And in fact, she was intending to ask for a longer delay than just to the end of June, but was, we understand, bullied by the hardliners into asking for a much shorter one. So uh, that is the problem. The majority of people in Parliament don't want us to crash out with no deal. Um, the government itself doesn't want that. I think public opinion, as far as we can tell, doesn't think it's a good idea. And certainly from the point of view of our other European colleagues, it's a lousy idea because, frankly, neither Europe nor the United Kingdom is ready for it. But 1914-like, you know, because certain things are in place, 
absent a positive decision to do something else, the possibility is still there that we find ourselves jumping over the edge of the cliff at the end of this month. So, so Peter, you've been involved in any number of complicated, difficult, important international negotiations. Uh, fortunately, most of those happen behind closed doors. This one we're sort of seeing played <laughs> out in Brussels and, in, and particularly in yeah. London in the parliament there. Uh, is it possible that Theresa May actually knows exactly what she's doing? And I say that because she has this plan. She lost it by a pretty large margin the first time. The second time, the margin wasn't as large. Is she wearing down even the opposition within her own party so that if she puts this to a vote a third time or a fourth time over a period of time, maybe between now and June 30, if there's an extension, in fact, that will end up being Brexit? Well, the plan clearly was to run down the clock having been overwhelmingly defeated by 230 votes the first time, 149 the second time, as the, as the majority against her deal, so-called deal, but there isn't actually much of a deal in it, but it's a package, uh, as the majority shrank, she clearly thought that if she does it another time, or maybe twice more, she might finally get it over the line, one final heave. The problem with that is that the Speaker of the House of Commons has put a spanner in the works by saying you cannot keep bringing this thing back to Parliament after it's been rejected, uh, unless it is substantively different. And the problem is that the European Commission have said it's not going to be substantively different. You've got your deal, we've agreed it, we've ratified it on our side, uh, that's it. So I think uh, that is the problem for her. At the same time, I learned back in school the Parliament cannot bind itself. If Parliament wanted to, they could overrule the Speaker, could they not? Well, nobody's talking about that. Um, the Speaker has gone back about 400 years in terms of parliamentary code and procedure. He is, in fact, a very powerful figure uh, at moments like this. The rest of the time, it seems like he's largely a figurehead just calling order and telling people to pipe down when they're speaking out of turn. But um, you may be right, David, if you are. I'm not aware of that. There's certainly not been any discussion here of Parliament voting to overrule the Speaker. And even if you tried to, I think it's pretty certain that there would not be a majority to do that. All the signs are that even from 10 Downing Street, that the Prime Minister is going along with that ruling uh, and that therefore she's not going to put it for another vote. As I say, the, I don't think the votes were there to get her package through. So the idea of attrition getting there in the end by doing this uh, seems to have gone away. And hence her reluctant decision to ask the European Commission for an extension so that she can either have another go at this thing once she has changed it a bit with the help of some Europeans or which is what, of course, many people who don't think Brexit is a good idea would like, to make time for either a general election or a fresh referendum. Well, and speaking of possible spanners in the works, or we might call it a wrench in the works back here in the United States, uh, what about <laughs> Jeremy Corbyn's uh, demand today in Parliament that, in fact, if they do get a deal, that it be put to the British people, the public, as another referendum? Is that a serious proposal? I mean, does he mean that? Could that happen? Or is that merely posturing? I think it is a serious proposal. It's a variation of one that's been kicking around for the last couple of weeks. Uh, the idea of putting it to the people has been bolted on to some other amendments, for example, saying, well, we'll approve Theresa May's existing deal if she then puts it to the people in a referendum. And you can add that qualification to you know, a variety of different possibilities, like an extension of the deadline, uh, like um, an alternative package. Uh, there is another version which is, please can we have some indicative votes now that we've got, or we hope we get, an extension so that we can test the will of Parliament on some other alternatives and then put them to the people in a fresh referendum. So I think this is becoming more of a possibility. If it only ends up to be a very short extension, either the 23rd of May, which is what the European side are saying, because that's when the European Parliament elections begin, or the 30th of June, which is what Theresa May has asked for, or all the more so if it's an extension of several months to later in the year, then you have got time for a number of other possibilities, including perhaps uh, another referendum. All those things come back into play. Not so much because the, the, Brex the anti brexiteers are saying, you know, we got it wrong last time round, let's have another crack at it, but because there is a sense that we are in deadlock, we are in constitutional crisis, mm. and that this mm. has now become the one way to resolve that deadlock.